Guys, welcome back to Schofield Weld, and we're sitting here at the Miller booth right now, right next to the brand new Big Blue 400 Pipe Pro. We're hanging out with South Coast Welding, Weld Tube, and everybody else. I'm going to introduce you through the line, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Weld Tube, Schofield Welding, South Coast Weld or South Coast Welding Academy. Right now, we got Mike, uh, instructor out of Weld Tube, Houston, Texas. We got Travis Fields out of Canada. We got Abraham, lead instructor out of Weld Tube, and then we have Clay Chesham, our Aussie, our Australian. Everybody have a blessed time. Be blessed and we'll talk to you later. Welcome back to WeldTube, guys. We are actually doing a live demo over at the Miller Welding booth. We are in Chicago, Illinois right now and over at Fabtech. Now, I'm hoping that by the time this comes out, it's all over, it's done. But if you guys were there, man, we really appreciate it. We had a heck of a turnout for it. But we are getting ready to tack this piece of pipe up. Now, we're running a 12-inch 375 wall piece of pipe. We're going to get it all tacked up in a 5G position and right here you can see abraham he's getting ready to put in his first tax uh he went ahead and took a 16th inch gap 16th inch land and ran that first tack and then you can see travis on the other side of him travis and abraham are going to be the ones running the root pass on this so they are what we consider our bead hands they're the ones that are going to be running roots in and for an actual pipe pipeline this is what we would be doing is we would have our bead hands we'd have our hot pass hands we'd have all that you're going to see that throughout the video but right here you can see travis helping get that gap he's going to go ahead and and either close the gap up or or widen it up just a little bit to where abraham can put that bead in there so guys stay tuned hope you enjoy it should be a dang good time look at this crowd was gathering as we were starting this pipe and right here i'm yeah, I'm right here starting the, the root pass. I'm going downhill, you know. Um, nice. Right here you got uh, Travis observ observing me, you know, telling me, uh, looking, your walls look like money. Take my money, Abraham. That's exactly what he said. Right here, I'm probably screaming at Mike, up, up five, down five, whatever. I was actually listening at this point. I was going up, up five and down five. But uh, that dial sometimes wouldn't read my finger, so I had like to double click it. That 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 carbon fiber hood, though, I really like that thing. Wow. So literally for the uh, rest of the passes, there was no slag cleaned off. It was just turn it up and burn, chipped wow. off. Yeah, we scratched some of it off. Yeah, tight in. Right here, tight into that uh, tech that was on at three o'clock. Right here, you got Travis starting the uh, the other side of the route. Right now, I'm just starting the arc here. It's actually going pretty good. I like the Miller XMP. There's very nice machines. Uh, all the pipe fabrication shops, actually in Alberta here, they all use the Miller XMTs. Very good machines. So right now, I'm just looking at the arc. Typically you want to have the uh, electrode line up to your line of sight so you can look down it and fall. You drop your shoulder and you look through the, uh, the electrode through your eyes. I'm just dropping my shoulder right now and uh, the coupon is a little bit small, a little bit uh, not very long. So typically you'll have something, if you have something tacked up, you can rest your elbow on. You can drop your shoulder a little bit more and, and drop your um, back end a bit more to help get yourself underneath the pipe. Pretty good here, uh, rolling the wrist. As you progress lower on the pipe, you kind of roll the wrist. I think to Mike, I'm yelling either up or down here. But it, uh, if you look at the stinger, I'm starting to rotate it. I'm rotating the stinger away from me. And that way you don't have to get your whole hand uh, underneath or your whole arm uh, get spat or anything burnt on you. Just keeps the electrode and everything away from you, especially hot, filling, capping. The XMT machines have a lot of nice dig, really nice arc characteristics. Not too sure what you're running, if you're running about a 6 or a 7. 
I think Abraham did the, I think the top portion of the pipe, and I took, uh, I was pulling around the bottom portion. So he'll start, he'll start, I believe, uh, somewhere on uh, the bottom portion on my side. That's uh, that's Abraham throwing a root pass on the bottom. So I think this is the part where uh, I got yelled at. Nah, not right now. So right here I'm throwing the root down. Finishing that bottom up. It's going in there really nice. Right here. Tying in, tied in. And then right here you got a uh, Travis starting on the top side of the route. Alright guys, so right here I'm throwing in the hot pass, about at 135 amps, uh, with an 8010-532. Uh, I'm stepping it in and out of the puddle, uh, like a whip motion. I'm coming out of it, watching it, uh, the puddle dry up, and then I'm going back into it, the leading edge of it, letting it uh, spread out to the walls and coming back out of it again. Right here, Travis just saying, take my money. Repositioning to go down. More on the pipe. Again, I'm just stepping in and out of the puddle. Make sure I'm watching it hit both walls and coming out of it. Everybody here watching us at the Miller booth. We have a uh, Dakota on his side doing the hot pass. Now we're doing our flush pass. I did crank it up to about 145 here, using a 532 8010 as well. And the reason I went hotter on this one is so I can have the puddle spread more to dump more metal to make sure the pipe flushes out. And again, I'm doing like a, a stepping in and out motion on it as well, just to make sure that puddle spreads and then come out of it, let it solidify and come back into it. Again, uh, taking my time in and out on it. Make sure everything's fusing in, getting a nice flush so uh, they can come in and cap it. We're trying to adjust the uh, vacuum just because uh, there's a lot of fumes coming off those 8010 rods and uh, we don't want to get kicked out of Miller so. Now we have Dakota putting his flush pass in. Uh, right now I'm running a fill pass on this 12 inch. We're running off that XMT350 Field Pro. Um, now basically with a fill pass, it's a similar, going to be a somewhat similar technique to your hot pass. Um, at the top I'm going to be doing a bit of a longer whipping motion, letting that metal whip out, and or whip out, let the metal freeze, push back in, let that metal pile up. Um, as you get down to the side, gravity's fighting you a little bit more, so you kind of have to adapt as you go. Um, a little tough to fill the side perfectly all the time. And then um, when you get to the bottom, you whip out a little bit to let that metal freeze. That way it doesn't droop down on you. 
But the biggest thing is you got to adapt to the fit up you're given and the pipe and conditions that you're in and go from there and give it your best. Okay guys, you can see that we're back in on this deal. So right here, we just got done with Dakota and Mikey. They just put in the filler pass and I am gonna go ahead and run me a little stripper. Now what that is, is it's just uh, just a little bit more of a, a little bit more metal. Now later on in this video, I wish I probably wouldn't have put that in there. Um, made it so that that puddle really chased me to the bottom of that piece of pipe. But me and Clay went ahead and put strippers in this and tried to just flush it out just a hair bit more to where where we felt pretty comfortable with the tack. Now, this is just a 532 8010 Hobart rod. And man, I tell you, Dakota and Mikey, they did a jam up job filling this thing up. It looked great. And just like what I was saying, I wish I would have just left it alone where it was. But, you know, lesson learned and you just keep going. But right here, you're gonna see Clay. He's gonna go ahead, strike off and get his filler ran in there here in just a sec. And then we're going to go ahead and start capping this thing so stay tuned right now guys i am running a stripper pass which is an extra pass where it may not have been completely flush on the previous passes so a stripper pass right on the side and a little bit down on the bottom which is pretty standard for a 12 inch 375 wall i was using a four mil electrode so that's a 532nd imperial 532nd EA10 Hobart Pipe Master 80. They run, they run really smooth, especially in conjunction with the XMT. Nice machine. So we handed it over. We dressed it up, ready to cap. And we'll also we'll be capping with a five mil, so 316th E8010 Hobart. Pipe Master 80 electrodes. So right here, I started at 133 amps, I believe. It started off a bit cold, so I went up in five amp increments until I reached the desired current, which I think was about 145. The motion I use is just a back and forth pausing on the backstroke just to fill that void up and create the stack of dimes look um, because it was a 12 inch 375 wall there's not a lot of side manipulation needed to be done until you get down on the side where i am right now and then it's maybe just a quick upside down moon shape side to side just to keep that puddle from not outrunning you all right, you guys, so right here, we're getting ready to cap this thing. Now, we got a 3 16 Hobart welding rod. We're on about 130 amps, and Clay just got done capping his side. Now, he's a great welder, amazing welder, and I tell you, his side slicked on beautiful. And so when it came to my turn, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. So anyway, so we're getting ready to do this right here. Now, what I said earlier in this, in this video is, man, I really wish I wouldn't have run that stripper in there with that 532. Uh, all it was doing was it was just kind of pulling out that well just a little bit and kind of flushing it out just a little bit more. Well, I really wish I would have probably left that out because it's really nice when you downhill to, uh, to kind of have a little bit of an edge for that puddle to grab a hold of. And it helps kind of stack it a little bit. But no big deal. We're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, we got the Miller XMT 350 Field Pro. And this thing is an incredible machine. Now, what I was saying about that puddle kind of chasing me a little bit this machine handled it beautifully. Now, I was able to control that puddle to the point of where I could basically just sit there and draw with it. And it was it was an awesome, awesome little machine. So anyways, two rods into it. We got 316th Hobart, like I said, 130. I think we started at 133, and then we went down to about, I don't know what we were on, about 127, I think, is the coldest we got on that, which is still pretty cold, but man, that little machine just... It did its job. It really just really stacked that metal on there, and it, it just turned out a real beautiful looking weld. So anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. I'd like to also thank the good people from Miller, letting us do this first ever pipeline downhill demo at a Fabtech in the Miller booth. It was unreal. I'm so thankful that I got to share it with my good friends and good brothers from the World Tube crew. 
I also. Thanks, boys. <laughs>